so welcome to the uh, indian uh, the pioneers of indian whiskey amrut single malt tasting and uh, i would love to introduce you to mr ashok who is the master distiller and uh, the head of international operations for amrut indian single malt whiskey so um, he is the one who has designed all our uh, limited editions starting from intermediate sherry to the greedy angels and the single cask and the kadamam which has been uh, displayed here today and um, he'll take you through about uh, the different procedures of uh, how we uh, create some uh, exclusive uh, liquid for you guys and i'll uh, pass on the diaz and the mic to mr ashok and you can shoot whatever questions doubts whatever you have today okay thank you uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us today on the uh, amrit master class um i know quite a few faces which i have encountered before and uh, just wanted to know how many of you uh, tasted amrit before right roughly half of it right right now um <clears throat> for many people uh, in the west when you talk about single malt whiskey from india is basically very strange for them because india as a country is not associated with whiskey from your perspective but the matter of the fact is india is the largest producer and the consumers of whiskey in the entire world Uh, the the annual consumption of whiskey alone is about 350 million cases in india and then the, the total spirit market runs like over 600 ca uh, million cases now so how did we end up with making whiskey in india uh, perhaps there's a obvious starting point we making whiskey and drinking whiskey in india is a byproduct of british colonization so the oldest distillery in india uh, dates back to 1827 and the first distillery was built up in the himalayas uh, in 1827 then uh, the category whiskey really caught on and today we have more whiskies in india uh, and more distilleries in india than in scotland uh, but not really known to the outside world because of the fact that the domestic market is so big and not many producers came out and marketed the brands of what they were producing into the global market so amrut is the first distillery which came out of india and started to sell the single malt to the global market we started in 2004 as for a selling single malt is concerned so our distillery is a 100% family owned distillery built in 1948 and uh, established by this gentleman Uh, called radha krishna jagdali that was the humble beginning of uh, the amrut and then many distilleries in india not only produce whiskey but also rum gin vodka brandy all the spirit products put together so we produce all the spirit products as well in addition to the whiskey so the first product we started to produce was rum in 1955 and in fact the rum originated from india it was uh, distilled in india as back as the 300 bc the sugarcane has been grown in india for a very long time uh, not many people know in this part of the world so sugarcane and the people went to the caribbean island by the british uh, to meet the growing demand of sugar and that's how uh, the caribbean islands become popular for both uh, sugar and and rum and uh, so again you know alcohol is uh, no strange uh, element for us at all so we produce uh, rum in 1955 1974 we started to make grape brandy in 1987 we started to produce malt whiskey so mainly for our blended whiskey but in 2004 we introduced uh, uh, our first single malt from india so this is our uh, rum still around uh, 1950 and this is how it was it's all like you know wood fired uh, still uh, there is no kind of depth.
Then X brandy cask, as you have seen, we produce our own brandy. And then into X rum cask, then into X sherry cask. So one after the other. And then it has about a very mild amount of uh, peated whiskey in that as well. So if you look at the glass, it's just absolutely soft on the nose. Quite a bit of fruitiness. And then the, the, the toffee aroma that you get from the rum cask, which is uh, there, right there on the top. Now, I don't know how many of you already started to do. That's about to tell you that. Uh, these two of them are from Sweden. They, they know quite a bit about Amrut, and they have seen a lot of Amrut master classes, right? Now, when you touch your glass like this, don't drink it yet. Just, just, <laughs> just touch this glass. Uh, it's a little bit cold, right? Now, if you are going to nose this whiskey, you are not going to get the complete picture of the whiskey. So what I would suggest is, just nose it as it is. What aroma you get on the nose? Any aroma that you can tell me? Awesome. Spices, sweetness, anything else? It's fruity? Citrusy? Black fruit, pineapple, tropical fruit. Right. Now, we are going to do a magic now, right? All I want you to do is Um, uh, you get like a lot of uh, mala sugar, uh, fruity note, a lot of cereal note. That's it. That is what in the new mix spread. But the moment you put into the barrel, there are two things going to happen. One, what we call is an additive reaction. Another one, what we call is a subtractive reaction. So the new mix spread is going to have a lot of roughage, which is going to be removed by the char inside the barrel, which is a subtractive reaction. The additive reaction is basically alcohol get oxidized within the barrel because you have a lot of pores, which is uh, invisible holes through which oxygen gets into the barrel and then oxidization happens. So over the years of maturation, the alcohol is converted into acids, then acids into esters because of the oxidization. That ester is what somebody said, black fruit, the fruitiness is all esters developed inside the cask during the period of maturation. So, now these esters and other alcohols in the whiskey has a volatility, which is the ability to come out proportionate to the temperature at which it is subjected to. Now, if the whiskey is cold, the aroma is not going to come out. That many whiskey consumers often add two drops of water in the whiskey, swell it through, and then nose it. What you're doing is you are inducing the molecules in the glass of the whiskey, and you basically try to make it to come out. My idea today is you are not going to add any water to your whiskey at all. You are just going to try it neat. Now, the other method is you are basically warming up of the glass. You are concentrating all the aromas get trapped inside the glass. Now, when you look at your glass now, you look at the top of the glass, you see a lot of misty vapors. It's basically the molecules which try to go out. You trap them. Now, what you do is take your hands off slowly, right? And slowly go towards your nostril and nose the whiskey. Right. What a difference. Did you see the difference? It's very aromatic. 
it's a, it's a, a more fruity, uh, it's a toffee note. Everything comes out now. You, you, did you see the difference? What it was a minute ago and what it is now. So that, that, that's how I basically approach any whiskey, regardless of at what strength it was bottled, right? Now, knows it? Take your first sip, just uh, swill it through your palate completely, like, uh, like you're chewing the food. Spicy. Yeah, it's Indian. <laughs> Uh, vanilla, vanilla, toffee, fruity, little bit of spice. And then if your palate is really sensitive, you see a very, very mild amount of uh, peat. Just, just, just a whip of it. it. It's not even visible, but it's very, very, very mild. Hmm? 4, PPM. 4 ppm. Yeah, probably less than that. <laughs> Now, in my second sip, it's better and better. It's a very uh, heavy body, very viscous, and a uh, lot of vanilla and toffee, as you described, a lot of fruitiness. It's 50% alcohol, right? I don't need any water. Just can drink it neat. <laughs> yeah, do you need water? No. <laughs> That's a good starting point. Um, any any questions on the Amrut Kadambam, the first one that we've tried? Any questions you have? Aging? Yeah, I'm just coming on the next whiskey. Uh, no, I'm going to reveal when we taste the next whiskey on the age. Let us just uh, put the age aside for time being. Apart from that, anything? Right, okay. Now, um, uh, is your question is, why did we move whiskey from one barrel to the other? Is what you are? Right. Now, uh, we have tried whiskey matured or finished in brandy cask. We have already whiskeys matured in, uh, completely in uh, sherry cask and finished in sherry cask. And then we have also extra cask as well. W what we found is each one has a distinctive character. For example, in rum cask, you get a lot of toffee note because of the fact it's coming from the extra cask. And then brandy, you have a little bit of sour citrusy note and uh, olorosha sherry, a lot of dried fruits and sultanas and virgin American oak or uh, ex bourbon, a lot of vanilla and caramel. So we were wondering how if all these three elements come together uh, in, in a single whiskey. Now, we try to basically blend uh, three different casts together, and uh, then we got an idea, how, why did you not move the whiskey from one barrel to the other? Which is a very cumbersome process, but we moved from one barrel to the other, which is far more complex than blending from three different casts, and that's the reason why we took why we are bottling it every four years is because of this reason. I got to physically move the whiskey from one barrel to the other. And that's the reason why the Kadambam is produced this way and again uh, bottled only once in four or five years. Yeah? Any other questions? Almost equal amount of time. It uh, spends a little bit more time in the uh, ex bourbon barrel when we started, uh, around two, two and a half years. Then roughly one year each in each of the sherry, rum, and brandy cask. Yeah? So good. Any questions? Yeah? The malt is actually used. Uh, the which, malt? Which malt did you use? It's 100% uh, uh, Indian malt. About, about 4 or 5% of peated barley come from Scotland. Uh, because we don't have peat in India. So that's the reason why you will struggle to find the peat. It's uh, just tantalizing the bud rather than, you know, just uh, uh, saying I'm there. 
you know, just very subtle. Yeah? Right. Um, the next whiskey is, of course, uh, very interesting, something very special. And if you're through with the whiskey number one, I request you to pick up number two, please. What is on the nose? Angel. <laughs> Indeed, a right answer. There's a lot of uh, what I describe as uh, tropical fruits. And uh, if you are aware of coconut, coconut oil, there's a lot of coconut. Nutty. Right? Let us, uh, let us uh, once you know it, I really re request you to warm it up. It's really going to help. Because this is something special. We have bottled 900 bottles only for the entire world. And out of which 300 bottles for Europe. And 300 bottles for America. Right? Frank, you can pick it up in New York. <laughs> right. So I'll just basically go through a couple of more slides. Uh, uh, this is a... Um, Stills, if you look at all these stills, are handmade by a local coppersmith right in Bangalore. This is not imported. And uh, this was built in 1987, as you can see. And this is the guy behind uh, uh, the launching of single malt. When he studied uh, MBA in Britain, he came up with the idea of uh, what is the possibility of selling a single malt from India into the European Union. So that was a humble beginning of why we started to sell single malt. And uh, this is official launch of single malt in Glasgow in 2004. I joined Amrut in 2004. Uh, I was recruited for the single malt project. portfolio. It has 28 international awards under its belly as of today over the last nine years. Right? And uh, these are all the countries where we are selling at the moment. And uh, when you take your hands off, just knows it now for me. How is the nose? Yeah? Right. This is... Uh, this is Amrut Greedy Angels. Um, it's a it's a ten year old whiskey. So Frank was asking about the age of the previous whiskey. The previous whiskey was aged for five years in total, five to five and a half years. This is ten years, and the name we said Greedy Angels. You all aware about the angel share? Uh, which is the amount of alcohol that evaporates from the cask each year. That is roughly about uh, 2 to 3 percent in Scotland. And uh, what we lose in Bangalore is uh, 10 percent a year. And that's why we say our angels are greedy. Right? So, in 10 years time, the total angel share is roughly about 70 percent. So, that means a 200 liter a bourbon cask gave me only 60 liters left back. 140 liters got evaporated. What happens is, because of the hot and dry climate in Bangalore, the whiskey ages alarmingly at a fast, faster pace than in Scotland. Now, when you know this whiskey, the complexity of what it offers, if I give this as a blind, you will really struggle to put a name and the origin and the age. Now I let you to taste that. That tell you the other half of the story. Look how intense the taste is, right? And then look at your tongue, the finish. Just tantalizing your taste bud, salivating. If it is salivating, the, the finish is good. A simple 100% Indian barley matured in an ex bourbon barrel all the way through.
often you swell through. You see the legs coming down slowly. That tells you the oiliness. A a a any uh, questions on this whiskey, Frank? You have any particular? You enjoying this? That's good. <laughs> Are you trying to de uh, slow a little bit the aging in your distillery? Trying to slow down? Yes, to, uh, uh, to get some older whiskies. Uh, okay, there is, a, there is a two ways of looking at it. Um, now, you would never ever work against Mother Nature, correct? The Mother Nature in Scotland gives a lot of logs and the snow, cold climate and everything. So it takes a long time to age a whisky. For me, the Mother Nature gave a very dry and a hot climate. Not exactly similar to Kentucky. Kentucky can be hot in summer, as you know, much better than me. And uh, it has a cold summer. We have hot, harder, hottest. There is no question of cold. Now, I can bottle a whiskey, just age for five years, like the Kadambam. And if I put it to you as a blind, you will struggle to find out on the age as well as the origin. The point is, I can bottle my whiskey in five years, but at the expense of losing almost 50%, that's off the barrel. Right? I don't need to wait for 12 years to bottle my whiskey, but in five years, but at the expense of losing more than half the barrel. So if you look at the costing perspective, it's really one and the same. So as long as people understand the tropical aging, I don't see an issue. And then the Greedy Angel is 10 years old, that tells you how uh, the depth of the whiskey and then the flavors it can uh, emanate out of it. So uh, we never walk against the mother nature. Whatever that can happen naturally, just we left it. Right? Right. So uh, the guy is saying on the back, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. <laughs> so, so we got to basically move on. Uh, uh, the last whiskey, uh, if you like a sherry cask, this is for you. This is bottle for uh, La Machine de Whiskey for this Whiskey Live Paris. And uh, the first bottle is open today. So you are the first set of guys to basically nose and taste this. This is roughly about seven years old. Uh, matured fair bit of time in Oloroso Sherry Cask. So first three years was in ex bourbon. The last four years was in a first full Oloroso Sherry Cask. So when you nose it, you see like a uh, lot of dried fruits and everything. And then I want you to figure out one more note that is coming out. I'll find out who it is. Yeah, just, uh, just warm it up for a minute. All right, if you look at the map, um, this is where our barley come from. Uh, India being a tropical country, down south, it's very hot. North, it can be uh, close to zero degrees Celsius in the winter and can be 45 degrees Celsius in the summer. So all the barley grain that we grow in India, all winter crop, right? So it has an ideal climate to grow barley than the south. All the Indian barley is grown here in Punjab and Rajasthan, malted in New Delhi. and bring it back to Bangalore. The distance between here to here is two and a half thousand kilometers. It takes six days for us to transport the barley from the north to south. The, the reason we can't grow barley in, the, in Bangalore is too hot, but it's good for much. move from south to north. So because of that, we are locked down here. So I have no other option but to bring the barley from the north to south and this way. And uh, uh, everybody, I think, would be interested to know about the water source, uh, especially in this part of the world. We are like very fanatic about the water. We have 
a 10 acre coconut farm. Uh, it's about three miles back of the distillery, right adjacent to a, a huge lake. In India, we are prohibited to draw water from the lake. So we pump the water from the underneath, 100 feet below. It's a very soft water, and that's what we basically use it for our single malt uh, mashing and distillation. Right? So how is the Olorosha sherry? It is a, it is a cast strength, sixty percent alcohol, right? But uh, you look at the palate; it's a very syrupy, lot of uh, dried fruits and sultanas. And then, the moment you swallow the whiskey, did you see the mouth is like very refreshing, like a, as if you had a like you know fisherman's friend. Uh, it, it's a, the whole mouth is kind of very refreshing. How do you like this all or so? One uh, important point that I want to tell you that you would remember for your life. If anyone asks you how Amrut is uh, different, Amrut, Frank, I think it's uh, interesting for you too. I always tell people, Amrut is a missing link between Scotland and Kentucky. The, the, the reason? <laughs> Amrut is a missing link between Scotland and Kentucky. The reason? The way how we distill our sprit, the ingredients that we use, is all like Scottish. 100% malted barley, water, and yeast. It's what we use to make the sprit, nothing else and distilled in double copper pot still. But the way how the whiskey is aged in India is very, very similar to Kentucky. The strength of whiskey in Amrut goes up every year, same like in Kentucky. In Scotland, it goes down because uh, you have a cold weather and the humidity is very high. And in Bangalore, we reach about 40 degrees Celsius in summer. The lowest temperature we see is about 10 degrees Celsius uh, around like 4, 5.30 in the morning uh, in our so-called winter period of uh, December. And then in the daytime, we are back to 25 degrees Celsius. So the difference between day and night on the temperature can be about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. So because of that, the casks expand during the day and contract during the night. So it put a lot of strain on the sprit that is being matured. So every year, we lose both alcohol and water out of the cask, pushing the strength up. The greedy angel, when we have bottle, when we took the whiskey out of the cask, it was 71% alcohol. We filled the barrel at 62.8. From 62.8, it went up to 71% over the period of 10 years. And uh, total 70% of total volume is lost. We left with only like uh, 30%. And uh, that is a fundamental difference between making whiskey in India, Kentucky, and Scotland. We are just kind of in between. The way how we distill the spread is similar to Scottish. The way how we age it is more towards Kentucky. That's why always I say we are a missing link between Scotland and Kentucky. It's a kind of bit of the uh, both worlds. Um, now, uh, th uh, uh, this is what I was talking about. Um, in Scotland, if you take a whiskey after three years, you have this much of lift, you have only this much of oxygen above the surface of the cask to react. And uh, this is what in Kentucky, further down. In Bangalore, even further down. So the oxidization is more and more and rapid. And that's why we are able to get a profile equivalent to 12, 15 years of age in the Scottish term in five years' time in Bangalore. That's exactly the difference. Apart from that, everything is uh, the same. Um, any questions? 
Yeah, please. please. <laughs> no, actually, in, in Kentucky also, they use new American oak, and I assume you use ex-bourbon, so it's not new oak. We, uh, uh, um, uh, all the whiskeys uh, that we have, Where? it's all 100% natural color. There is no caramel added. Scotch whiskeys are allowed to use caramel. The bourbons, they are not allowed to use caramel. <laughs> now, to address your question, we use 25 percentage of our total barrel inventory with the Virgin American Oak. So every year, we induct new Virgin Oak into the system. We draw part of our whiskey from the Virgin Oak on the final bottling. Mm. And okay. uh, the reason why we are not 100% using Virgin Oak is we are not trying to make a bourbon. We are trying to make a single malt. Yeah. So where the wood influence has to be there, but it should not be dominating like a, like a bourbons normally. And uh, I know where you're coming. So it, it's okay. And then are you using for the virgin oak? Are you using American oak or European oak or French oak? 95 percentage of the barrel that we use in our distillery are uh, American oak. Uh, because uh, European oak can be very aromatic, but it got a lot of tannins. So you got to be really, really careful with the, the amount of European oak that you're using. So it's only 5%. The sherry cask, for example, is a European oak. But all our standard barrels are all American oak. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We'll have to continue to ask questions. But uh, outside of the room, we'll uh, go on with the questions. I'm sorry, because we, we need to prepare the room for the next uh, Other master, classes? OK, just, uh, really I'll sorry. just take one sure. minute. Um, I, I hope uh, uh, you really enjoyed. Uh, if you wanted to taste, uh, suppose if you are like a really fond of pity whiskies, uh, we have more in the stand. If you are a person who like uh, cast strength whisky, we have whisky bottled at 62%. And you will be so surprised to taste the whisky at 62%. Still, you are okay. <laughs> uh, it's so soft and easy to handle. So you can uh, come to our stand, Amrut stand. We'll be happy to meet you and answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Drink a lot of water. Keep yourself hydrated and be strong. Thank you. Thank you.